the God who answers by fire. I believe that God is training his church to move into another level of power, another level of glory, and another level of understanding of the spiritual world. Because a lot of what we face is affected by the spiritual world. And they call, the Bible talks about the God who answers by fire. And so there's a reservoir of fire in heaven that God used specifically at different times. And you have to know how to activate that in your warfare. Because there's some things that has to be birthed by fire. And we're going to talk about the, the coronavirus. We're looking into research. But there's another thing we can put to it to stop it in Canada. And it's to burn it up by fire. And this morning we're going to do it. So we, God is going to show us how to use the spiritual to rule the natural. And it says, the angel took the censer and filled it with the fire of the altar and threw it to the earth. Now, it's interesting that even now in the book of Revelations, Jesus is called the Lion of Judah because he roars in battle. He's also called the Lamb of God because he is the sacrifice for the sins of the world. And we are the living stones. We, that's what the Bible calls us, the living stones. And we are the wood in the fire because without wood, the fire goes out. And that's why a nation like Ephesus that was evangelized by Apostle Paul, it is now Turkey. It was a Christian nation, but now it's a Muslim nation again. Because when the wood up, up goes out and there is no fire, then they're, they're, they're with, it's not burning. So the Christians, if we don't become wood in the fire of God, then eventually Satan's will pour enough attack on us till we dry out. And so wood is very important for fire to maintain and keep on going. And then in Psalm 104, it says he makes flames of fire his servants. So in Proverbs 26, 20, it says without wood, a fire goes out. God needs us to keep the fire on our shift. Because right now the enemy is trying to choke out the fire of Christianity in Canada. It is a tactical, strategic. They're forcing us even who, to say who we can hire. They're forcing us to sign docu documents before we can hire students. So that means it's trying to choke out the wood to keep the fire burning in Canada. And, if, and then he, that's why he wants to make us flames of fire as servants of God. To say on our shift, we stand and guard for our families. Stand and guard for our children. You have to know what they're reading in school, what they're studying in school, what the teachers are telling them that is contradicting to your conscience and your value. So we really have to be flames of fire that are alert now for the next generation and the future of Canada. And so Moses became wood that burned to save two million lives. David became the wood that burned to save the nation of Israel. Esther became the wood to burn to save our people. God always used human to fulfill his will on earth. And so when you pray for healing, God comes down and sometimes he answers by fire to destroy the disease. If the sickness is not just chemical, if it's a cult, then he burns it. If sometimes he comes down as fire, as laser surgery, depends on what is happening in your body, so that it can tactically hit and burn only the area and leave the other cells for him to heal and restore. If you need protection, sometimes he puts a ring of fire around you. And I now I'm wondering, I, I'm finally getting to understand why Pharaoh couldn't kill Moses. Why did he not even beat him and, and do anything like that? Because a ring of fire was around Moses. God put and said, you cannot touch him. I have made him like God before Pharaoh. And this morning, we, our past, your pastors, are going to put a ring of fire around you. Because that is the only way. And David, David, a ring of fire. No matter how big this giant is, you cannot kill David. As a matter of fact, he'll use a stone to kill you because the ring of fire is so powerful. 
When you pray for cleansing, God comes down with fire to burn out the darkness, burn out the fear. When you pray for salvation, loved ones, God has to send fire to burn out the blockages in their heart. When you pray for personal revival, God sends fire to ignite you so that you can become passion for God. When God, when you pray for fire, it sends revival. It can ignite nations and draw people's heart to God. When you say, when you pray down and in spiritual warfare, sometimes God has to use fire as a spiritual weapon to destroy evil, demonic forces, and altars of Baal. The disciples in the upper room were baptized by the Holy Spirit and fire. Fire. And so God not only sends fire, but he is consuming fire. He is. So when you accept Jesus Christ in your heart, fire comes in and that's why new Christians are passionate and they will evangelize and, the, and they will share what happened to them. And sometimes when you become a long time as a Christian, you lose that fire, you lose the passion, but God has to reignite now in Jesus' name. 1 Kings 18, 24 says, You call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord, the God who answers by fire. He is God. So Jezebel was confronting and was perverting the whole of Israel, destroying them. And so God had to use Elijah to raise up and said, Jezebel, we're going to stop your spirit. You're not going to corrupt the entire priesthood. You're not going to corrupt the entire, entire uh, Israelites. We, we're going to have to stop you by fire. And so Elijah said, the God who answers by fire, he is God. And he built an altar. And the demonic forces built an altar. And he says, okay, the God that answers by fire is a real God. And they prayed over their altars and they prayed over their altars. And Elijah prays over his altar. God, prove yourself that you are the God of Israel. Prove yourself that you are the God that is alive. And Elijah prayed. And the, and, and the Jezebel priest prayed. And Elijah prayed. And Elijah says, the God who answers by fire is God. And God says, I will prove who I am. And the fire of God came down on Elijah's altar. And the altars of demons stay there burning. People of God, Satan is no match for you. Satan is no match for you. And so God wants us to understand that he is consuming fire. The grave couldn't hold him. Death couldn't hold him. Even, even, even though they put a, a soldier in front of him, it couldn't hold him. Because the fire of God is greater than any stronghold and withholding spirit. And so if there's a withholding spirit in your life today that is hold up your blessing, holding up your promotion, holding up anything in your life. There is a fire. It's called consuming fire that can burn it up because whom God blesses, no man can curse. And so in 1 Kings 18, 1 Kings, in 1 Kings 18, Elijah, it says that he called down the fire and the fire fell and burnt up the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, the soil. It also licked up the water on the drain. When all the people saw it, they fell prostrate and they cried, the Lord, he is God, the Lord, he is God. Because when the fire comes, it triggers revival. And notice the fire is associated with sacrifice. It's an altar. It has stones, then it has the wood, then it has sacrifice. Without sacrifice, the fire does not come down. And it's very important for us to understand that the fight for your offerings, the fight for your tithe. Because if God doesn't see your tithe and he doesn't see your offering, there is no fire that can fall from heaven. It is so wicked that even Pharaoh tried to stop the fire. This Jezebel spirit that Elijah was calling, it was such an evil principality. And people of God, it is the principality that has come down again to rule the world. It has come down to rule the world. And so when you look at the Jezebel spirit, it works against prophets. It works against pastors. It works against churches. 
It breaks up marriages. It breaks up divine relationships and friendships that literally God put in your life for your sake and for their sake and for a cause. It infuses you with darkness and discouragement. It encourages suicide. It is the spirit that gets you into sex trafficking. And that's why sex trafficking is becoming stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. Because Jezebel has come down to corrupt nations. Jezebel deceived the priests of Israel to put Baal altars in the temple and think it's okay. And so we see now where even in the world, the priesthood is beginning to think that certain things are okay and embracing it in the church of Jesus Christ. Because Jezebel know that she cannot kill you, but she can get you to kill yourself. And so Jezebel seduces get you into perversion, sexual addiction. It seduce you. It deceive you. And now the biggest thing is the suicide. Because even the students are saying, I can't fight it. Because after you're hooked, you find yourself that the only thing can get you out of the darkness is suicide. And Jezebel waits for you after you die. Jezebel's spirit toughens up women to act masculine. And so when you see a masculine spirit in woman, you see you can be powerful and still feminine. You can be Esther or you can be Jezebel. So Esther was powerful. She ruled in Persia. She had the king's heart, but she was so feminine that she won his heart. A Jezebel tough spirit can repel men. And so the Jezebel spirit also work on men and makes them feminine. It affects even your wrist. It affects your hip. It affects your voice. That you become perverted. And when you open your mouth, it comes out in a different way. It's a Jezebel spirit, people of God. And guess what? The church of Jesus Christ, you have the power over Jezebel. Lift up your hands today in the name of Jesus. And that Jezebel spirit, you got to protect your children. You got to protect them from Jezebel. You got to protect the young boys from Jezebel. You got to protect the young girls from Jezebel. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Jezebel, burn! Spiritual warfare, fire is important. And the important thing, people of God, is that there is no fire without offering. So the first thing the enemy will try to do is to get you to stop paying your tithes, stop giving offering, because he cannot send fire if there is no offering. It's the offering that the fire come to burn. It's the tithe that the fire come to burn. That's why Jed, Elijah had to put a bull and he had to put different kinds of offerings. Sometimes God even tell you what to do. Why? Because the fire comes upon the offering. Not just wood. And so in Exodus 10, 24, when Moses went to Pharaoh and says, you will let the people go. Pharaoh says, I'm not letting him go. And they begin to negotiate. Okay, leave the women. Moses says, we want our women. But the biggest thing he was after is their animals. Why? Exodus 10, 24, Pharaoh summoned Moses and said, okay, go. Worship the Lord. Even your women and children. But leave your flocks and herds behind. Why did the enemy want the flocks and herds? They're leaving with all kind of thing, but the flock, even the women, take the women, take, but leave the flocks unheard. Why is it that they want the flocks unheard? Exodus 10, 25, Moses says, you must allow us to have sacrifices and burnt offerings to present to the Lord our God. There is no relationship if there's no mutual giving. There is no relationship if your heart is not towards him. If everything you have is just for you, there is a limit in that relationship. Because in the natural, you cannot even love someone and not give. 
you have you cannot love and not give so when you sing the song and carry on but then the things that is in your heart that mammon spirit will stop you from giving back to god what he gives you in the first place it's not until you lose your job and you want a job you begin to pray God bless me with a job. God bless me. You're like Santa Claus, bless me. Santa Claus, I love you at Christmas. Santa Claus, no. It's a relationship, people of God. If you want God to bless you in your business, then how do you bless him in his business? The Bible says in Matthew 6, 33, take care of God's business first. And then he'll take care of yours. Take care of the kingdom first. And he can take care of yours. The enemy will try to stop you. And when there's no protection over your money, you're the first to let go from a job. Covenant wealth means that what God brings to you is for you and for him. Because without wood, there is no fire. Without serving, there is no flame. And the fire of God will go out on our shift. But in the name of Jesus, we're going to keep the church strong. We're going to keep worship strong. We're going to keep giving strong. We're going to keep serving some. Because we and our part will be the one to keep the fire burning. Oh, Ramashanda, lift up your hands now and let's begin to pray for Canada. Because I tell you, this Jezebel spirit in the name of Jesus that is coming against the church, she will, it will burn in the name of Jesus. <sighs> Moses says, Pharaoh, you think we're a fool? No, we must take what we have, our livestock must go with us not one hoof is gonna be left behind come on let's say it together not one hoof is gonna be left behind you hear what i'm saying come on talk about your families not one hoof will be left behind not one will fall not one in the name of jesus the enemy try to steal to kill and to destroy but tell the enemy not one hoof will be left behind and Moses begin to say this is why we have to use some of the offering the lambs and the animals to worshiping the Lord our God until we get there we will not even know what we're to use to worship the Lord in other words I don't know how many cows I'm gonna need I don't know how many goats I don't know how many lambs because it depends on the attack against me That determines what you give according to the assignment. That's why God said to David, bring bulls, not chickens. Because this demon that comes after you will destroy you, David. Oh, people of God, lift up your hands. God is teaching us, training our hands for war in the name of Jesus. Moses says, I want my lamb, not one hope. I want to be there. I want to present offerings to our God. I must keep God with me. He's the cloud by day and he's the fire by night. I am not going anywhere without him. And the only thing that keeps him with you is when he see the offerings. He see the tides. He says, okay, my son is still in covenant. My daughter is still in covenant. And then when he looks for a Moses, he can look among those people. Because if you're stingy with your money, you will be stingy with your heart. It's a, it's a spirit. And so God did, did, did demand certain sacrifices, offering the ten. He says, when I see the tides, I will rebuke the devourer. He cannot rebuke the devourer if you don't tithe. It's a legal thing, people of God. It's a spiritual thing. It is a legal thing. He says, when I see the tithe, I will rebuke the devourer. And so, people of God, I am so concerned about tithe and offering that mine is automatic. I don't want to forget. I cannot afford to forget. So it comes out automatically, 10%. And then on top of that, offering come out automatically. I forgot how much percent. Just to be sure that I have both. And then my giving all the right, that's just offerings. Because I have to know God is with me. It's not by might. It's not by power. It's by the spirit of the living God. And you don't dare go after a Jezebel when you're not even in right standing with
God is limiting his glory in your life. Because glory is connected with purpose. There was a, a plague that came upon David's group. David had done something about numbering his animals. And God says, David, are you trusting in your, your soldiers now? He numbered his soldiers, I think. And then he numbered some other things. And God says, David, are you going to trust in that now? I took you from nothing. You didn't trust in anything but me. You saw as his armor. It couldn't protect him. He had soldiers. He couldn't protect them against Goliath. I alone, you started in glory. You have to continue in glory. And so David, not cloud of 70,000 people a plague came and began to take off the Israelites and then God sent a prophet and said David what you did was wrong and the plague is here God is telling you go sacrifice and God tell him what to put on the altar because this plague will be stopped if your heart is turned back to God the Bible says David went to buy a, a property to build an altar. And this man said, no, David, you're the king. I will give you for free. I will give you for free. And David says, no, I don't want nothing that doesn't cost me. I don't want you to give me money for my offering and tithe. I want it to come from my own sweat. What I work for come from my own sweat. My sweat must bring what I give. So David said to Aruna, let me have the site for your threshing floor so I can build an altar to the Lord that the plague on the people will be stopped. Sell it to me at full price. I don't want any discount because I need God. I need to pay the price with animals so that I don't have to pay with my life. Oh, people of God, lift up your hands so you're seeing what I'm seeing. I am saying the coronavirus, SARS virus, cancer can be stopped by the fire of the almighty God. Come on, church people. God has made you the church. He has made you with power. He has given you the blood. He has given you his name. There is no other name. And you and I and the church of Jesus Christ can pray and repent for the sins of Canada and say, God, protect us from the plague of the coronavirus. People of God, this, this teaching is very important now because I don't know what is going on in the world. Australia, fire, unquenchable, one billion animals were killed. Then they had sandstorm, strange situation. Then bats, bats come down in Australia. What kind of thing is that? Rat bats, you know, come on. You know, what, what is happening here? And then locust plagues is sweeping Africa, you know, all different nations in Africa, and it's moving from one to one to one, Kenya to, to Uganda, and the plague of locusts. People can't walk in the street. In some areas, locusts is in your face, and so they're hiding in their houses. Uh, what, what next? God, this is a plague. This is what I read about with Moses. The locusts came. The darkness came. The, the river turns red. What, what next, oh God? This is why God is showing us how to pray, to pray for your household. David says, sell it to me in full. I don't want any price. And then David built an altar to the Lord there, and he sacrificed burnt offering, fellowship offering. In other words, he even knew because the prophet tell him what to do and how much, how many bulls and how many lambs to kill because it was specific. It was a principality of infirmity that came down that could wipe out half of Israel. So you need to come good, David. That's why I don't even tell, oh, I don't want you to give it for free. No, David, no. I want your sweat. I want it to come from you. Out of your provision, give it back to me. And the Bible says David built an altar to the Lord there at a specific place where the plague had burnt out. He sacrificed burnt offerings, fellowship offering, and then he called on the Lord. And the Lord answered him with fire from heaven on the altar of the burnt offering. If your tithe is not there, if your offering is not there, don't bother with the box. Your prayers in this box 
is connected to your title. People of God, we got to, we're not going to let Satan fool us. We're not going to let Satan fool us. Because I tell you people, this is so, this is so powerful when we look at what is happening. You know, the Bible talk about a, a king that sent an ass for an altar of Baal to protect him. And I think it was Elijah that said, you, why, well, what, is there no God in Israel that you have to go to another God for protection? Is there no God in, 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 in the life that you have to go to an occult person for miracle? You have to go to an occult person and play with Christianity and the occult, and then you're still in chicken blood thing, and you're still in suspicious thing. Is God not enough for you? You're still burning the red candles of all the, 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 the spiritual baptists. Is God not enough? Because God is not enough, King. You will never come out of your bed. You will die. The king sent for Elijah. Who, who said that to you? And his, his, his commander said, uh, it, It's this man that dressed up like this. Oh, I know who that is. That's Elijah, the troublemaker. Go call him. And so the army came to Elijah. Said, The king says, You must come to him immediately. Elijah looked at him and said, if there's a God in heaven, and I'm a man of God, burn with fire. Fifty, all of them were burned with fire. Are you understand what I'm talking? Fire. That's why I try to share how to use fire properly. It is powerful. Fire from heaven. But Elijah says, if I am a man of God. In other words, if I'm doing what is right according to the principles of God. If I can stand here fearlessly with faith because I am doing the right thing, you will burn. And all of them were burned. And so the king heard, sent 50 more men, armed, chariots, spears, everything. We have come to tell you, you must come to the king. If I am a man of God, fire come down and burn. They were all singed with the fire. If I am a man of God, are you a man of God? Are you a woman of God? Is there any legal documents that Satan has against you? You hear what I'm saying? Because you're going to go from glory to glory. You're going to go from power to power. You understand what I'm saying? So I want us all to be ready. I want us all to be ready. Come on, tell the person beside you. It's about all of us being ready. That's what I'm trying. That's why I have to teach this. Because I don't want not one left behind. Not one left behind. And you know the truth. And the truth will set you free. King sent the third one. Trapping on the horses coming. Boom. But this time they bowed down. They say, Man of God, have mercy. Don't kill me. Because I have families. And I have this and I have that. And I, have that. I beg you. Because I know your God is greater than my God. I know your God is greater than Baal. I know your God. I fear your God. Have mercy. And Elijah says, Go tell the king that I said he will never leave his bed and he will die. And he died. People of God, fire. The fire of God is one of your weapons. Lift up your hands. We're going we're gonna to be protected today in Jesus' name. A ring of fire. We're going to, my, my pastor told my pastors this morning, I said, up to last night, I wasn't sure we're going to do it, but we're going to build a wall of fire around you. I told the raids to bring in the children at certain time because I tell you, coronavirus will never touch any one of you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Say fire! Say fire of God! Come down. Come on, pray in the spirit right now. Let the fire of God ignite your passion. Solomon built the temple. And the Bible says when Solomon finished praying, fire came down from heaven and consumed the what? Burnt offerings. 
and sacrifice. If there's no burnt offering, if there's no sacrifice, there is no fire. And the glory of the Lord filled the temple. People of God, God is God. And God is going to fill the temple of your hearts. Because you are his temple. And he wants to fill your heart so that the glory on you will become fire around you in the name of Jesus. And this morning I was, a, I was away in Kelowna last this week. And as it hit me so many areas, files that are opening up, so many nations, so many ish things that are opening up. I said, God, and I spoke to one of the leaders of our nation. I said, I'm going to build three concentric Raw walls of fire around you. And I was speaking into their heart about protection because politics is 50% spiritual. Politics, kingdoms, 50% spiritual. Every king, most kings have their demons of Baal. Most politicians make covenant with the devil. And God is saying, is there not a God? Is Jesus Christ not strong enough for you? It's Jesus. And so now there's going to be a showdown. And after speaking at me, I said, oh, my God. But I need three rings of fire around me, too. And I phoned Pastor Stowe. I said, Pastor Stowe, we have to bring three rings of fire around me. Because of the opening up and the government level that is happening. People of God, he knows you by name. And he will protect you. And today we're going to build a wall of fire around every member of the church. If you Are you a member of the church, first of all? Because if you're not a member, you're a visitor. That's a different thing. And that's why we're having a membership classes with Pastor Sean. Because we want to know the KCC family. That when we pray for the KCC family, we know the KCC Kayil family. Because our family is beyond this door. Our family is in Rwanda right now watching us. All these other places in Indonesia, in Singapore. We're launching in the, in the Asia, Africa. Our family is wise. And every morning when we're praying 6 o'clock, God protect the KCC and Kayo family, KCC Kayo family, in the name of Jesus, and fire, reach, leave our altar, and hit Indonesia, and hit Singapore, 